Humans? I'm seriously thinking about switching to warp. I'm not entirely sure yet. You see, the logins on terminal is kind of a problem. I would be totally fine if it was gnome logins, but now it's from a suspicious company. Um, so I really don't know what to do because all the rest, it's like a dream coming true. The other big trouble with using warp is that having a non gnome terminal, which is the most Linux oriented application, makes the whole desktop feel less like gnome. Basically, the non-open source part makes the whole desktop look more like macOS rather than Linux. Um, I guess everyone knows everything about it, but please, give me two minutes to show you the things I like, with the hope that someone, one day, will create a similar terminal with GNOME tech. Come on, someone, pretty please do it! So, on the early releases, at least for Linux, the interface was a bit glitchy. But after the latest updates, the UI looks quite solid and also is super fast, courtesy of Rust. Now, we have tabs on the header bar that I'm huge fan, but GNOME remains a big denier for reasons beyond any reasoning. Anyway, the various controls here and around aren't particularly catchy. The animations are completely missing, but at least we don't have to deal with them much. Something we deal much, and I love 100%, is the command palette. Basically, the command palette is the only UI you ever need. And meanwhile, I love how the additional widgets pop up on the sides, kind of like an attached window to the main one. By the way, there isn't an Adwaita theme yet. To me, split panes is an essential feature of a terminal. For GNOME, pff, the last terminal could do split was Tilex. Sad. With warp, not only can we split panes, but we can also resize them, reposition them, and even move them to new tabs. That I forgot to tell you before but we can also set colors, which is yet another highly requested feature for GNOME Terminal. One thing I don't like is the autocomplete that can become quite annoying. When we start typing, we get suggestions on a graphical UI, which by the way is super cool, and I hope one day GNOME VTE can have a better interplay with GTK widgets and be able to do such things. But the big problem with this is the actual implementation, that it should list way more suggestions because currently it does only four, so you need to scroll and lose precious time. But above all, it's simply annoying. Then again, it's something easy to fix, so I guess it won't be a problem for long. What I do love though, and I know I use the love word constantly, but that's how the things roll, is that we can interact directly with the files. So if I click on README, Warp will ask me if I want to open it with the default app or with the embedded markdown editor. That damn girl, it's so nice. And it's not just nice. It's actually super convenient because sometimes when you want to quickly install something from GitHub, it really helps to have the README side by side. Um, on full screen works better, huh? First thing to do after installing Linux is to set up your shell, agreed? If you have done it like 1000 times, perhaps feels all right. But if you are a newcomer, setting a shell can be like walking in hell. Fortunately, Warp offers already a quite nice prompt. We can pick the Linux if we don't want that, but most likely we do want it, and we can customize it on some degree by adding or removing the infos we don't want. In a very nice UI, I must say. So we have all the common things we need. We can pick the new line option, and this prompt is also transient, which is even hard to do in many open source prompts. Transient means that the previous prompt tries to get less distracting by changing its graphics. In this case, it fades out to gray. One feature I use a lot is the workflows. That's basically how we can save and run commands and commands with parameters. That's not my main account. On my account, I have some workflows I use daily, but let me show you how it works by creating one, okay? Let's do something simple, like updating Fedora. Put a description, and next we write the command we want to run. It could be something complicated, but for now, it will just be a pseudo DNF. Update. And then we can pass a parameter with double curly brackets. For example, a package we want to exclude. And as we type the parameter, we already get an option below to pass the default value, awesome reactivity. And just like that, we can have a shortcut for updating Fedora with kernel packages excluded. Obviously, we do that from command palette. So we save this, get the green notification that everything's all right. And then we can find our command by its name. I know it might not seem like much to you, but when you're just starting to use this, suddenly you have dozens of workflows and there's no turning back. And we don't have to worry about losing them or need to rewrite them for whatever reason. 
because everything is automatically saved on Warp Cloud. So here it is, and we can edit it, remove it, whatever. And it even keeps statistics on how many times we run it. So, if you run Arch, you better start logging your Pac-Man use, see the results at the end of the month, and start wondering, what the hell am I doing with my life? In the meantime, on Warp Drive we can also save notebooks, which I'm not entirely sure what's the point, but it's like normal notes on Markdown that later we can share with Teams. Basically there are lots of features I don't have idea how they work, even if I use the app a lot. But it's safe to say that Warp has gone way beyond than been just a terminal, which I'm not completely sure if it's something I do like. AI is everywhere in Warp, but we mostly use it in two ways. For start, we can start typing some question on prompt, and Warp will understand this isn't a command and it will activate the agent. For example, we can tell it that we want to run a GNOME app on a different runtime than the one it's attached to. So, Papers Nightly uses the master SDK, but let's assume we want to run it on 47, okay? Warp will post us the command, and let me edit this a bit. Although the more expressive you are in your question, the better the suggestion would be. This reminds me Warp lacks a voice option, which would greatly speed things up. Anyway. So for runtime, I will pick the GNOME SDK 47, which is like the GNOME platform 47, but also includes the development files. Um, and let me correct the domain name a bit. Now, when we run this, we get an error saying that the SDK 47 is missing. So next, we have one of my favorite warp features, attaching agents to blocks. Blocks are essentially the output of a single command. So, if we ask it what happened here, Warp will explain the problem in natural language, and also give us a suggestion to fix it. Sometimes the suggestion is correct, sometimes it's wrong, but every time is simply impressive to watch. If we put the non-open source factor aside, there are two more terrible things that might prevent you from using Warp. The first is that Warp screens very often become quite bloated, so instead of helping you to speed up your workflows, it actually delaying you and iterating you. The second terrible thing is the pricing. On the free plan, there are only 100 AI requests, which means pretty much no AI. But even if we update to Pro, there are only 1,000 requests that are barely enough for a moderate use, and that for $18 a month, which is simply insane. For instance, Unity Muse with $30 a month offers unlimited suggestions, generating usable art assets and animations. And on top of that is a full game engine, not a terminal. And so I'm seriously thinking to switch on Warp because it really speeds up your workflow, it helps you to learn new things, and definitely is more fun to use. Also, it's like a generational thing. Warp is one of those apps that changes everything, changes what a terminal is, changes people's expectations, and basically makes every other terminal look like history. When you're using Warp, you look back at GNOME Terminal and you are already like, hey chief, look what people used to use. But deep inside, I feel hurt and betrayed. And this video is a call from me to everyone to try creating a GNOME Warp with an Alama agent and change everything back to normal, back to open source. Ouch! I'm off.